Welcome back. Thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to look at joint distributions and conditional distribution for this particular uh, contingency table. And then we'll talk about the results and kind of what it's telling us about the relationship between these two variables. So just as a quick reminder, a contingency table is made for bivariate data. So that means that there's two pieces of information collected on one individual. The other thing that's true about a contingency table or a two-way table is that the explanatory variable, so the variable doing the explaining, is going to be represented in the rows. Now, the table that you see here is sex and opinion on um, driverless passenger vehicles. So we would expect that an individual's sex would predict or have an effect on whether or not they're comfortable riding in a driverless passenger vehicle. So these terms up here are definitely would not or probably would not. And then I combine that with, um, I combine those and then definitely would and probably would I combined those. So we're gonna start by calculating a uh, joint distribution. So the relative frequencies for each of these cells. Now, when you do a joint distribution, and you're calculating those relative frequencies, remember that you use the observed counts divided by n, where n is going to be that total in the bottom right-hand corner. So that means that my observed count for men, and definitely or probably would not, is 53, and then I would divide that by the 198, and that gives me uh, 0.267, and let's round correctly. And then we'll move to the men who would. So 46 divided by the 198, and that gives us 0.2323. And then we'll move down to the women, and they have 72 who definitely or probably would not. And that would be 72 divided by the 198, and that gives me 0.3636, and then finally we have 27 divided by 198, and oops, the daisy doodly doos. Oops, the daisy doodly doos a second time. There we go. All right, one, three, six, and let's round correctly. So. With these, I should be able to add them all up and they would add up to one because this is the whole group making up that total and that was the denominator for each of the groups. So if I do point, uh, 0.2677 plus, and then we'll move over to the men that would, uh, 0.2323 and then the women that would not, point 0.3636, and then the woman that would, 0.1364, and you can see that that comes out to be one, which is correct, and that is our relative frequencies for this joint distribution, so the distribution between these two variables. Now, the next thing we have is something called a conditional, conditional distribution which means that we're putting a condition on the way that we calculate things. And usually with this type of data, the condition that you put on is what's represented in the rows or the explanatory variable. So here, my condition is going to be men and women, and I'm going to calculate it based on the total that they have in their row. So if I were to do, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna do N for, uh, not and W for would. So if I was to do not given, and remember that straight line is telling you what the condition is, so given uh, being male. So we have would not ride in a driverless passenger vehicle given that they're male. So we still use that observed count. So I have 53, but this time I use 99 because that is the uh, condition on this, and that is the total that's appropriate for these given situations. 
So I have 53 divided by 99, and this comes out to be 0.535, and we'll round correctly. So then we'll have would ride in a passenger, driverless passenger vehicle given that they're male. So I still use the 46, so I still use that observed count. But again, this time I use the 99. So I have 46 divided by 99. And that comes out to be 0.4646. Now, because this is all one row, these two cells should add up to one. And you can see that that's true. So adding those two cells sum to one. And now if I were to do women, I would say not. They would not ride in a driverless passenger vehicle given, remember that's the straight line, they're female. So I use the 72 still, that's my observed count, but I use 99 because I have that condition on this problem. And that's what that line means. 72 divided by 99, and I come up with 0.727, we'll round correctly. And then we have would given, they're female, and we have the 27, that's our observed count. And then we have 99 as our denominator. So that gives me 0.2727. And again, just to verify that that's been done correctly, 0.7273 and 0.2727 should add up to one, and they do. So those were calculated correctly. Now, here is something that's different. If you saw my first two videos looking at the joint distribution and conditional distribution, I talked about how if those conditional values are very similar or approximately the same, that means that there's probably not a relationship between your explanatory and response variable. And that was the case for the last set of data that we looked at. However, here you can see that we have men and women, and then our response variable is would not and would ride in a driverless passenger vehicle. And when you compare these different percentages, you can see that for the would not, that's a big difference between those two. Between the Oh, I'm sorry, between the would, that's a big difference. Between the not, that's a big difference. So that means if we were to continue on and actually do a test to see if there is a relationship between sex and whether or not someone would ride in a passengerless vehicle, driver, it's such a mouthful, right? Driverless passenger vehicle, I would expect to see a relationship because I would expect that these two being as different as they are, we would see something statistically significant in that. So if you stay tuned and go to my uh, videos on the introduction to hypothesis testing, we will confirm and see if there actually is a relationship between sex and whether or not someone would ride in a passengerless vehicle. Driverless passenger vehicle, sorry. Hopefully by the time you see that video, I'll get it right. See you in future videos.